Uh, greetings, Chris Phoenix again. We're going to do uh, an After the Facts. It's going to be the BGFG show, it, kind of like a morning edition. There's a lot of times where um, I have a little bit of time before I go to work. And, I don't know, I look I look at, jeez, probably 1,500 headlines every morning. Um, over the years, my, my mother was an editor of a paper. And she kind of taught me how to read the news and look at news objectively and things like that. Then with my own experience of researching things over the years since the essentially the dawn of the internet. I I think I, I like to think that I've gotten very good at, at picking out certain headlines or reading through things with a short synopsis. And that's how I've built the Twitter feeds as well as uh, BGFG when I throw stories on there. There's usually a reason for them. I don't just grab the latest story and put them up there. Providing services. I grab whatever adults with autism and related I possibly can do. So in the mornings, I usually uh, with and without the wife. So the wife might be on these broadcasts. Make a difference. We I just bring up you know news that interests me. Medical. That dental. Four oh one. You can use throughout your day. You know, talking to people, if you're a salesperson, there's always a, a common denominator you want to find when speaking with somebody, especially in the business world, regardless of what you're doing, whether it's sales or CEO, white collar type things. You, you, you got you to gotta know a little bit of everything to make a good pitch or to make a good sale. I like to think that I, I try to help with this. There's, I, I can't tell you how much this has been beneficial to me personally. Because throughout my career of dealing with people in IT and such, having a broad scope of things, so when they make a reference or they make a joke or uh, they're just simply talking about a topic, I can sometimes jump in on it or, or make a comment or at least understand what they're talking about, which is beneficial in the business world. So what I'll do is, uh, in accordance with BGFG and what we do on BGFG, I'm most likely going to... Let me turn this light off. This is a little bright. Uh, what I'm going to do is just talk about some quick little news articles. You might see these later on on BGFG. You might see them on the Twitter feed. You might see them on the blog where I'll elaborate more. Um, but for the most part, these are just things that I throw out there. And you might see things that I don't pick up on right away. And that's cool too. So let's get to some of the different stuff. Usually, uh, again, in the mornings, uh, it's myself and my wife. Sometimes she'll be on the broadcast, sometimes she won't. And I just usually have a cup of coffee. Um, I might vape some CBD, depending on the pain level in my in my knees and stuff during the morning. Like I said, a cup of coffee, and I just go through news. I mean, this is after I go through all my email, which you guys won't be seeing. So, let's, uh, let's see if we can have some fun. I use a uh, program called Feedly. I really like it. I play. F I pay for the professional version. It's just an aggregator. I used to use Google's RSS reader, which I thought was phenomenal. And again, one of those one of those things where Google discontinued it. And it was like, what the hell? Uh, RSS is is a great way to get the synopsis of a website or a news site that you like. So I have them broken down, as you see in the left-hand column, in different categories. Apple, Gaming, Geek. Those will change time to time. Um, I know I had to go through my news one a lot, because there's a lot of repetitive news, which I don't like. And also, I try to, there's certain bigger conglomerates that I try to stay away from. Fox News. I just, I don't like them. So my news may vary, but usually start off with the Apple one and uh, you know just listen to some music while I'm going through stuff and I'll bring stuff up European lawmakers want to force all smartphones to have the same charging port yes please and Apple's of course defending their lightning adapter but I can tell you from being in the repair industry or trying to repair my own stuff life is a lot easier when you have the same plug you can have one cord plugged in tucked away someplace neatly that you're gonna plug in whatever unit you want. For instance, I have um, end tables. I think that's what you call them, end tables, tables, next to the arms of the couch downstairs in the living room. And within those 
uh, stands, there's a power supply. So a lot of times we have uh, power cords plugged in there. So it, it could be power cords for uh, the switch. It could be the power cords for, I don't know, headphones, PlayStation controllers, Xbox controllers, who knows, uh, whatever it may be. Again, we're an Apple household for the most part, so you'll find a lot of you know, lightning cables down there and everything, but at the same time, I don't necessarily need the lightning cables down there. I mean, I have USB chargers that you need for the controllers for the different gaming systems. Uh, you might have a USB-C charger, Type-C, for certain things. My Amazon Kindle has, a, has its own power cord that I use for it. Um, so, it's... I mean, I, I take the Kindle to the church, so I only charge it one, once a week. I don't know. It's, I think it's a good idea to have the same port. It makes life a lot easier in a lot of different ways. And I, I still have no solid reasoning as to why Apple does the whole... Uh, what the hell? Uh, I don't understand why Apple does the whole lightning thing. Like, I don't have a reason. Like, nobody's ever sat there, even in the Apple world or at work or anything else, nobody's ever sat there and said, hey, look, if you play with this lightning adapter, this is pretty awesome. Um, you know, it, it does this, this, and this. I, I haven't heard it. I, I'm, sure I, I'm sure there's some reason, but I don't know it. Um, well, firmware is breaking AirPod Pros. That sort of thing happens a lot with products. Is my mouse just not scrolling suddenly? Doing anything. Huh. Hold on, let me double check this because why would my mouse suddenly not allow anything? Huh. <laughs> That's so weird. So that was, <laughs> and this is this is so BGFG right here, because I have absolutely no reasoning as to why that just happened, none, none at all. Um, but it happened, so so be it. So yeah, back to what I was saying, firmware and AirPods. Firmware breaks, and then they'll have new firmware that, and it's Apple, so I'm not expecting this to be too long before it's rectified. All computer, looking at this one right here, all computer sales are down. Even their uh, projections for Christmas are down. U.S. Attorney General asked Apple to unlock iPhones used by Florida mass shooter. Denied. Not going to happen. And if it does, it's going to be a huge problem. If... If the U.S. Attorney General forces it and Apple has to give up to the FBI or to any government agency access to the iPhone, right now the iPhone is the most secure device. I mean, you can't get into it. And there's proof of concepts, I get it, to crack it and everything, but there's no easy way to get into it. It's just not. And that's the way Apple kind of wants to keep it. As soon as they as soon as they do this, it's, it's, it's not even a question. And, and when people you talk to about this, this is not a question if it's going to happen. It's simply a question of when it does. If Apple makes an unlock feature for the government agencies, it will get out, period. Now, you know, you can think however you want. You want to think corrupt politician? Fine. You want to think corrupt police officer, or FBI agent? Fine. It can also be somebody that's just simply sneaker netting it. Walking in with a USB key, somebody, a contractor or, you know, a uh, low-level employee has access to something real quick. You know, let me just grab that. Hey, buddy. 
You know, it, it happens. And the moment it gets out, it's over. It's it's a done deal. The moment they create this, it's going to get out. Whether other agencies, other states, other countries have it, it's it's going to happen. And this is why Apple does not want, want to allow it. Because as soon as it happens, it's over. Anybody's going to be able to unlock these phones. Award shows are bullshit. Every one of them. Not because, oh, my favorite guy didn't get picked up. My favorite guy didn't get an award. My favorite actress didn't win her award. Nothing to do with that. It's just complete bullshit. I mean, there is so many times that things just don't make sense. Whether it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or the Oscars or the Grammys. It's just really, that's the most influential thing you have right now to you you elitist sons of bitches yeah it might be important to you but it <laughs> whatever uh cosplay politician elected in taiwan <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> oh that's gonna make a show right there <laughs> See, that's the type of things you look forward in the morning. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's just the great stuff right there. It's quality. It's quality. Uh. What's this? Oh, that's interesting. that later I don't like that art look never have I don't like it uh, again not taking anything away from the people that created this but your creators your artists good on you keep on keep it on um i don't think that type of art i can't draw it I, I, though if you give me about 10 minutes I, I bet you i could i i just i think it's lazy i think it's lazy art completely Another thing, I used to always want to go to CES and to E3. Um, you know, Xbox re recommits to E3 2020. Both of those shows are not what they once were. Uh, it began uh, again because they got too popularized, and CES is is so big you can't see everything. Uh, people that grab up the good spaces or the spaces business wise that are smart, like when you first walk in the door and stuff are really kind of garbage in a lot of ways. For instance, um, Charmin this year at CES had a robot that brings you toilet paper that they're never going to release, and that was as soon as you walk in the door. So naturally, that's going to get a lot of attention. Again, laziness. I cannot tell you how much the snowflakes are lazy because one of the things they like to do is in a situation like that, they would have walked up to that thing and went, that's awesome, that's cute, let me be the first one. Let me blog it, let me take a picture, let me write a story. I'm done, I can F off for the rest of the time that I'm assigned here. Or I can just leave, get back to, you know, the States or, or wherever you are. Go back home. And it's just freaking laziness, man. If I'm wrong, send me an email or something. It's just, I'm not hard to find. That's a good deal. Not a fan, huge fan of PNY, but they do make some good things. I always felt that they were like hit or miss. That's pretty badass right there. Cyberpunk 2077 guitar signed by Keanu. That's freaking awesome. It deserves two.
<laughs> and that's when your faith in humanity is restored when you can take a game like this. Look at the artwork's pretty cool too. <laughs> oh, hay fever. You can be a hero even if you have allergies. Children and adults with yeah, it's gonna hit Twitter. disorders since 1976 is hiring direct support professionals to work part and full time hours. Be a part of a supportive team and make a difference. We you know offer what? I think I might just do that. Including right earn time now. Off, medical, dental, 401k, and more. Apply now <laughs> at grodennetwork.org. This is Shaq for Icy Hot, and I got a few words about pain. See, pain thinks it can overpower you, overwhelm you, but it obviously doesn't know you. You're not backing down from pain, because Icy Hot's got your back. Icy to dull pain, and hot to relax it away. So you can get back to running, throwing, kicking, swimming, cycling, CrossFit, you name it. Because pain does not get the final word. You do. Icy Hot. How the hell did I spell that wrong? Pain. Use as directed. Bam, Twitter done. <laughs> Games have played long. That's stupid. Not a Call of Duty player personally. Played a couple of them. Not, not bad games at all. I'm not into realistic shooters. I'm into more fantasy shooters. secretly enjoying the shit out of this game right now. And I feel awful about it. It's really, it's it's a nonsense game. I mean, I have to complete force, uh, two Star Wars games. Still. And Overwatch is just taking up a lot of time. Pikmin's a good game. It's stupid fun. Kind of like Overwatch. But Pikmin's a little bit different. And it looks great. Always makes you chuckle. You see, Destiny's always patching. Here's, here's my thing about this type of bungee patches and things on games. I get it. Game is pressed to gold. By the time it hits the store shelves, it could be a little bit of, of time and they found a patch they need to put in. Fine, I'll go with that. Um, a year or two into the game, it, there shouldn't be any more patches left. You should have a grasp of how the code works and you should be able to write code accordingly for it. I agree that sometimes you have to buff, nerf, different weapons or things in the game to make it better, but you shouldn't be patching your game at this point. I, in my opinion. PlayStation makes some bad moves sometimes. They really do. Like when they shut down PlayStation View. PlayStation View was brilliant. 
Um, and I felt that using your PlayStation in your home theater system or under your TV in your in your main living space, I think the PlayStation was perfect at that. Uh, great Blu-ray player, good, great interface. I think their interface is light years ahead of Xbox. But they do stupid things. Uh, no redesign for the logo. Okay, that's a personal choice. I, I get that. Uh, skipping E3, I don't get that one. You have a hard enough time. You're, you're committed to VR, but you're not releasing any really new games or, or making any talk about it. Your VR system's a pretty good entry-level VR system, especially the people who already have a PlayStation, yet you're not pushing it. Battle Tank alone is worthwhile. Beat Saber. Um, they have a Doctor Who VR game. I mean... You're just missing out. Then they're skipping E3. What the hell? Why? Oh, good. These are the last pair of leggings because I don't need leggings. They're actually... I saw people at work that were wearing leggings or yogas or whatever you want to call them with with one pocket that's skin tight on it to hold obviously your phone. The f have we come down to? <clears throat> Bullshit. Really? Move costume was pretty stupid. It's just pretty outrageous that they have this many differences. <laughs> eh, whatever. Understand what this dude's wearing? Is that like a Jedi outfit? find that same thing with overwatch I just don't i think it i mean i wasn't there year one so i can't speak on year one i understand how commentators want to leave and, and go freelance and if they're not happy with the direction of something i can tell you from playing both ranked matches and non-ranked matches the game overall isn't that difficult it's just not it's fun because it's so simple pick your character you'll get used to some characters some characters you don't. You'll pick your type of character that you like and shoot. It's really chaos. I never hear anybody talking, ever. Even if I'm talking, I never hear anybody talking. Uh, occasionally I hear a throat clear. 
but I never hear anybody talking, so that you're definitely not working as a team. It's kind of like you get into Overwatch, you pick a character, say if you're a healer, and you just make sure you heal everybody. Because that's your job. Shoot some people and heal your teammates. If you're an attacker, then you literally jump in the game and start shooting anything that moves. If you're a tank, then you protect whatever asset you need to protect, or you kind of stand there and take a, a brunt while people get behind you. It's not hard. It really isn't. So the fact that they're changing it, but it's definitely when you're playing, it's definitely everybody kind of knows their role and does their thing. If you don't like it, you don't like it. There's very few people I find staying back at the, like if you have to secure a checkpoint, you have the checkpoint, and I'm sometimes the only one standing there. You can watch some of the videos on stick style. Sometimes I'm the only one standing there and I get bored and I end up walking around and trying to find somebody to shoot. But for the most part, I mean, that's what you should be doing kind of protecting that spot because if somebody gets around and I don't know different different people play games differently Destiny 2 story is finally getting good really because only to the people that have been there for two years because the story is convoluted even when I jumped in I, I have like three or four stories I have to play through before I can even catch up and these aren't like let me uh let me spend an afternoon playing through this new no. these are days that you're going to be playing some of these that's what turns me off of destiny Yeah, some of these concepts are I'm gonna show them all. I've seen a couple other ones. They're pretty cool. Interesting, that wouldn't surprise me. Big Sony event starting. Great opening paragraph. A big Sony event is starting this week and already people are speculating about the possibility of this being where the PlayStation 5 is finally unveiled. Given that the PS5 is coming out this year, but it hasn't even been officially revealed, it's clear that something's going to have to happen soon if Sony wants to have enough time to hype the next generation console. The question people are asking now, if this is event, is in fact something. Great opening paragraph, because that's obvious. And let's see, it's going to be today. Experience PlayStation will come to New York City, Sony Square. Let's see what happens. By the way, that light that they show in that video right there, I have that. It's awesome. I love that thing. It's better than the Xbox One. Uh, it's like, again, Microsoft found out something happened, and they went, hey, we can put out one too. It's a big, giant Xbox logo, and it's stupid looking. But PlayStation One's really good. So today, I'll uh, keep everybody posted on Stick Style's Twitter page and online broadcasting, I'll mention, I'm sure. Maybe I'll work PlayStation today. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Nemesis AI. I'm going to save that because there's a friend of mine that I work with that we could not remember what the name of the Shadows of Mordor game engine was. It's the Nemesis engine. And it's awesome. It should be in every game. <laughs> the truth is that many games are held together by duct tape. Fact. Twitch streamer banned for unfinished female character art. <laughs> just, I'm never going to entertain that because you know exactly what happened. It had lovely lady lumps. I broadcast on Twitch and sometimes I just get amazed at the stuff. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, just check out the Just Chatting section. Look over at the Just Chatting section. That'll go over at me. 
that's what you do most of the time. The Oscar's frozen too snub. <laughs> See what I mean about the award ceremonies and such? The Oscars Frozen 2 snub. Look, if the Oscars are for movies, and Frozen 2 broke a lot of records, and the fact that you don't mention them is a problem. Cartoon or not, it broke records. It, it made money. It did great. But you know what? That's going to be the Oscars' own undoing. running ring fit. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. The Grodin Network, a leader <coughs> in services to children and adults with autism and related disorders since 1976, is hiring direct support professionals Ooh, new who are smart and that could be very cool. Be a part of a supportive team and make a difference. We offer excellent benefits, including earned time off, medical, dental, 401k, and more. Apply now at grodinnetwork.org. This is Shaq for Icy Hot, and I got a good title about Goose pain. Game. Good See, stuff. Pain things to get That's it for that. Now I'm not gonna go through all the news because there's 440. You're not back. I usually go through the top. Icy yeah, hundred say. Icy the dull pain and hot to relax it away, so you can get back to running. Yeah, this whole MLB thing. Swimming, cycling, CrossFit. I don't, I don't get that at all. Because pain does not get the It just, word. I don't get it. You do. It. Icy Hot. Rise from pain. I mean, when I was a kid in Little League, if you could tell what what the what the motions were, taking off their hat twice, rubbing their chest, if you could figure out that what that was, you knew that the guy was going to steal. Get better call signs. I, I mean, the guy the guy was recording them to analyze them. I don't know. Is that legal? Is that not legal? Fuck if I know. But, but they did it. Get better hand signs. Right there, and I see it in retail a lot. U.S. consumer prices rising slightly ever since Christmas. I mean, I, brick and mortars took a beating on Christmas. And those that work in brick and mortars, I don't want to hear your fanfare. You don't need to send me any email or or jump into the chat at all. It's a fact. If you look at the undiscriminating numbers, again, like I tell people on BGFG, go over to overseas papers and you get the real facts. But Brick and mortars took a beating. There wasn't that many people in the stores. There wasn't. Toys R Us, which their whole business was for Christmas. Toys R Us is not around anymore. So those parents that are going to get those toys are not not there anymore. And the bottom line is when you go to the store now, uh, whether it's in 2020 or this, this last Christmas in 2019, you're going to get just the... Um, you're gonna get just the things that you're there for. You know, if you're shopping for your wife and your two kids, that's what you're getting. You know what you're going to get. If you're shopping for your wife and your two kids and 
your parents or both sets of you know, grandparents, however you want to call it. You're getting the grandparents a TV. You're getting the other grandparents a TV or a microwave or a stereo soundbar or something like that. You're getting the kids today. You're getting the kids like one or two gifts, and they're probably expensive gifts. A replacement laptop for Billy's school. Um, Sally's uh, 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 Nintendo. You know, you're going to get her a Switch because she really wants a Switch. That's all you're going to buy. And... To go out to the store, you know, a lot of, again, our society, the way it is right now, a lot of people are getting lazy, not wanting to go out. And if I can sit home, I do it too. You know, we're all victims of it. We can complain about it. Like all the people that you see on TV that are complaining about on the news and in uh, politics and stuff. It's like bullshit. You, at, you, I guarantee you have an Amazon account and I guarantee you that you're spending money on that Amazon account. So you can bitch and moan that you're not shopping places. I like going to brick and mortar places still. I love going to brick and mortar, you know, touching, feeling, playing. You know, you can't you can't know how bad the Apple keyboards have sucked in the past four years unless you go to a store and bang your fingers on it and go, what the fuck is that? Um, but again, they're not, they're lying to you. It's 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 complete bullshit. They're they're lying to you. It, brick and mortars did not do well this Christmas at all, and a lot of them are rethinking everything. Fries for those that are listening um, out in the Midwest in California, tech, you know, so, Southwest. Fries is doing a whole new model of consignment, which is god awful stupid for retail. And nobody, including myself, I apps, and I'm always optimistic with that shit. But I can I can tell you honestly that I have absolutely zero idea how that shit's gonna work no idea at all how how even remotely a consignment business model will work with employees there in a store the size of <clears throat> the size of a Best Buy or a Target or something like that oh what the hell got caught my throat but yeah they're they're ri- raising prices because they can't afford it I mean there's been boatload where I work there's been a boatload of conference calls as it is You know, you know, shit's going sideways when, when companies start talking about hours, employee hours. That means they're looking to cut big time from someplace. Are you getting it? Yes, I'm getting it. That's you know what, good on you right there. That's hilarious. <laughs> Mass hysteria takes hold as Windows 7 axe falls. Okay. I'm sure I'll do this on the show this week. On BGFG Show. At length, hopefully with Fremo. Your Windows 7 is going to work. If you really want to do it. I'm sure Fremo will agree with me when we get on the air together. Windows 10 is good. Very good. Very, very good. As a, as a Mac person, I'm telling you... Windows 10 is very good. We're, we're very picky with our software, and that's why a lot of Mac people don't like using Windows, but Windows 10 is very good. Solid. But Windows 7 was good as well. Not bad. It's end of life, which means Microsoft is not going to send any important security patches. They're, they're not servicing it any longer. They will in Enterprise, which is a whole other story. <coughs> Excuse me. But... Uh, Consumer electronics aren't going to... Your, your shit's going to still work. It's still going to work. You, you can still do all the shit that you want it to do. You just... It's just not going to update. You're susceptible. So if... You, and again, I want to say this for, you know... The 1500th time. All the sheeple... All the sheeple need to listen. If you are not sure about your computer, if you can't do basic tasks properly, like remove a program when we're done with it, make sure it's completely cleaned out. Slow down when you're installing a program and see what it's actually saying and asking you to do and where you're putting things. If you don't know those things, then you need to get rid of Windows 7. Because there's one thing that I see on a regular basis is that people that have little to no knowledge of computers, operating systems, or maintenance of such. 
These are the people that consistently cause problems. I've got into arguments with people last week alone of the fact that, hey, okay, you apparently, you've been here multiple times. You have no idea how Facebook works. No matter how many times I tell you to stop clicking on the games and playing these games, I can clearly see that you're still playing slot machine games and shit like that. And you're not listening to me when they tell you that you need to update Flash, you need to update Java, that it's a container. And I always make the Tupperware analogy of, you know, your wife tells you there's chicken in the, in the Tupperware and there's chicken and rice and potatoes. I make that analogy all the damn time and nobody friggin' listens. Well, guess what? With Windows 7, and if you don't want to change, and that's, I've, oh, I've come across several people only want to use Internet Explorer because it works with the websites they go to. What websites are you fucking going to? Because they're absolute bullshit and garbage. And, 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 you know, the people that don't listen, it's, look, you're going to get sniped. No matter how you cut it, it's going to happen to you. You know why? Because you don't fucking listen. And you don't pay attention to the technology, the tech-savvy people in your life. There's, you know, I want to say it, there's no hope for you. You're, you're going to constantly come across this issue. Constantly. If you don't pay attention. Oh, uh, just I'll have somebody else do it. But you keep infecting your shit. Then you wonder why your, your email was hijacked. Or you, you suddenly got logged out. I can't tell you how many times I've had people go, I didn't put a password in here. But as soon as I get in and, and bust a password and get into their computer, right on the desktop is like Team Team Viewer and this uh, a driver updater and just ridiculous common bullshit. Well, it's your own fault, and you kind of <laughs> you kind of deserve it. But Windows 10 is solid. Windows 7 is still good, but if you can update, update. should die of starvation in today's economy and country. My God, I'm a fat fuck, you know? And I, I work with so many people that are overweight. I see them, you see them in the street, you work with them. They, you know, the idea of being skinny, it's it's really nowadays, when I was growing up, it was kind of in the middle. Nowadays, it's really one or the other. Either these people are, are like pencil thin or you're overweight and obese according to medical standards. You know, I'm not calling people that I work with fat. I'm not calling people fat. I'm not fat shaming. I'm saying that clinically, we are all, including me, are overweight. Shit, my son. I almost had a heart attack when I took my son in, my 15-year-old son, who's a rail. Like, no no muscle or fat on the kid. It's just bone and skin. And they're like, yeah, we got to be careful over here. It looks like he's a little bit... I'm like, are you fucking honestly telling me that my son is overweight? That he needs to be careful? What the fuck is wrong with you? Look at him. I wish I was that kid. But what the fuck ever. Look at this. Overweight my ass. But there's either one or the other. You know, and when I see somebody um, die of starvation or something, I'm like, that's, you know what? That's disgusting. Because so many of us throw out food. So many of us binge food. So many of us buy junk food. I mean, we buy a 14-pound bag of fish sticks, you know, for the family. We're going to keep in the... What the fuck is going to take you to cook up an extra batch or instead of using the whole um, uh, rack, split it in half, give half to the kids because, you know, we all could probably use to eat a little bit less. Take the other half down to the corner. Nice and hot in a hot paper bag, just driving your ass in your warm-ass Lexus. Drive your ass down to where the panhandlers are and fucking hand that to them. I don't care if they're asking for money or cigarettes or change or whatever the fuck they want. If they're panhandling and they're serious about it, a, a bag of hot fish sticks are going to be fucking badass. And they're going to love that shit. So think about that stuff. If you're if you're driving around town and you know you get an extra fry or, or let's say you, you, you're actually going to McDonald's drive through you know, I pause the music because I want people to hear this. If you're if you're driving around, you're going to Dunkin' or you're going to McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or or Sonic or wherever you're going, and there's a there's a package deal, say, uh, a combo combo meal for X amount of dollars, a number five, a number six, a number four, and you want that sandwich in there, but you don't want the fries. In. I'm not going to get the combo. I'm going to no. If you can afford five fucking dollars 
for, for that fast food meal, but you don't want the fries, you know, drop them off to somebody. There, there's people on so many different corners, and I know you know where they are in your, in your area or on your travels to and from work. You know where the hell they are because those are the ones you avoid. You get into the other lane. Or you try to slow down. Maybe you'll get, you know, the green light or whatever because you don't want or you roll up your window if it's nice enough that you had it down. I get it. I understand it, and that's why it's sometimes some communities try to ban panhandlers. But the bottom line is if they're legit, and a lot of them are, believe it or not, a lot of them are not legit, which disgusts me. But if they are legit, just, you know, stop and give them those fries. In the bag, you know, give them the fries. The fuck does it matter to you? But to them, that's the meal for the day, or that's their morning meal, or that might tie them over till they can get something in the back of a restaurant when they close at 1 a.m. while you're warm in your damn bed. You know, people that think like this are the people that have also been struggling. If you've never struggled, you don't know what it's like to want food, you know. And that's, that's why I'm fat, because I ain't never going to want food again. I'm going to make sure I eat my fill. It sucks. It sucks going to bed hungry. It does. All right, let's move along here. Now we got tech news. Definitely <laughs> smart soldier. It's true. Yeah, robots were everywhere at CES. A lot of them were... I want to say bullshit, because everybody puts hard work into it, so it's not bullshit. But... <coughs> They were they were senseless in a lot of ways, like the Charmin one. For the, uh, I get it. You want more toilet paper? I don't know. If you like pina colada, spilled your pina colada. Bounty look it up. Look it up online. The, sh- the Charmin released a robot that will bring you toilet paper. Okay, great, funny. It's not even going to come to fruition. They they flat out said that it's just not. So if you're not going to have this robot, but if the robot did exist, what's going to happen there? So you have a couple of scenarios. Either it you're 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 um so we it, in my house we have a rack that holds five rolls in the roll that's on the roller, but five spare rolls. So it's very rare that we're running out while we were in the bathroom but i get it we store them outside the bathroom in a closet or downstairs in the basement one or the other so the idea of a robot for me doesn't make a lot of sense my door's closed i don't know how many of you are are, i don't know many how many of you are shitting with the door open you know that's just i really have no words for you at that point if you're shitting with the door open. And I know people that do. They, they at least piss with the door open. And I don't, I don't fucking get that. But anyway, I digress. So this robot brings you the toilet paper. Well, if my toilet paper stored it downstairs or maybe in a closet, a linen closet, across from the bathroom in the hallway, how the hell is that robot going to help me? It's not. So there's robots that are being made just for the sake of making a robot. That I don't necessarily agree with because it's just, it's pointless. I mean, what, what the fuck's the point? And some of the uh, robots this year at, uh, robots this year at CES were very personable, you know, therapeutic type robots. Again, I like that idea, but I don't know how many families, you know, I have an autistic child here at the house. I have bipolar child here at the house. Um, You know, disease, disease is a funny thing. I don't know how much these will help in a lot of ways, especially as the child ages. I don't know how many of these parents, and again, I want to make this clear. When you have a special needs child, um, I'm a step parent to it, and it's very difficult for me to understand. It's different for a parent because they have pure, unadulterated love. I love my stepchildren. I completely love my stepchildren. They're not my kids, though, and a step parent will understand this. I absolutely, I will, I will throw down and I will give up myself for my two stepchildren. Absolutely, 110% my three stepchildren 110% their family 
they're not my kids. There's a difference. And when you do have children, um, you'll understand this weird bond you have with your children. It's it's inexplicable. It's inexplicable. You just know. When you hear people say, you just know, this is the feeling they're talking about. I know when my kids are, are unhappy. I know when my kids have had a bad day from school. I don't have to see them. I don't have to hear them talk. It's just, you just know. Um, and a robot... We spend a lot of time, special needs parents spend a lot of time, and there's a, they're, we're unique groups because you don't know the pain. You can appreciate the struggle of being a, 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 a special needs parent, but you will never know it unless you are one because the love you fear for, for your child and how, how strong you are with your child and how much you care about your child, that simply overwrites everything else that you've learned in your adulthood. It just really does. And you just truly want to do something for them and give them every opportunity they possibly can to live that quote-unquote normal life. And you'll hear people say that a lot, but the bottom line is this is what every special need parent that I've talked to one on a one-on-one -on -one basis feels like. We're struggling constantly, some more than others. You know, the stay-at-home moms or the stay-at-home dads, man, you're you're handling the worst of it every day, every day day every moment there's something something i'm not saying bad i'm not saying good well, I'm, not, I'm not i'm saying there's there's something every single day every couple of hours or so whether it's a loud talking or um you know it could be a spasm it could be a seizure it could be it could be something just something a noise um a hundred different things for a hundred different diseases and you're on edge all the time you know and, and, you know, and, and it's funny, that there's special needs parents are, are the people that you'll find at the liquor store most often. <laughs> because, un, and, and I can tell you, it's it's a fact. You, you're you not jeopardizing your children, but let me tell you, when you're, when it's been a long week and you'll find hills and valleys with special needs kids, it's when you find that week that they're, you know, more or less okay. That bedtime comes when those kids are in bed, man, you're popping a couple of shots off, you know. You're 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 banging a couple back, because it's it's tough. And when I see a robot that can help in this type of way, it, it really is close to my heart. And I, if it works, and I've seen a few that do, but a lot of these, a lot of us parents, we don't have that kind of money. I mean, the the medical cost alone for a, a lot of special needs kids, from medications to uh, sometimes hardware and things that they need or, or to get in and out of bed or just the doctor's bills alone. I mean, we... <laughs> um, special needs parents are some of the most innovative and clever people when it comes to billing and medical. I mean, there is some... There's help out there, absolutely. And when you go looking for it, you'll find there is a lot of it. And you try to get as much as you can because these bills are massive, massive bills. So when I see something like I don't know if I don't know if they can afford a four hundred five hundred dollar robot to help their child and stay with their child and make their child feel better. And as a parent, I can tell you I would love to be able to afford that. That would be like top of the list. Oh, I'm not getting RAM. Bang! I'm getting this robot because this robot is what my kid needs when I'm at work or when the daycare sitters here or when they're going to bed or when they want quiet time. Because again, they're kids. They want to be alone sometimes. Or they want quiet time. This is something they can confide in or turn into or whatever. I would like to see the medical field subsidize these. If they're legit and if they can be worked on through the FDA and proven that they're indeed going to help. Um, in some ways, I think these robots will be better. You know what? I should do this because... Um, let me add this. I'm going to annotate it as well, I believe. Because I want to do a story on this because again it's it's something I, I it's always good to have a an animal so a cat or a dog that's your your I can't remember the name of it that's your animal you know if you have PTSD or something like that service animal if you have a service animal that's great that's awesome I mean I think it's outrageous sometimes when you see people with like a service ostrich really um so so I get it but a service cat or a service dog that's your animal it doesn't talk back though sometimes these people whether it's ptsd or special needs 
let's just call it globally special needs. Um, if they're special needs, you know, they don't have anybody to talk to. They don't have any way to respond back. They don't have anybody, a lot of times to bounce that off. A lot of times they're introverts because of whatever their condition is. Or they they cannot simply go out and socialize. They do what they can. Xbox and PlayStation help a lot. Nintendo helps a lot. Um, different social media platforms can help a lot. They can also hurt. I encourage parents all the time to stay away from the internet uh, with special needs kids because you're always going to get the negativity people or the... Nah, I don't want to say bullies. I think bullies is a strong term that's thrown around way too much. But the people that are just douchebags that want to create controversy or because of anonymity, they feel they can say whatever they want to me, thinking they can make people laugh or, oh my God, that was outrageous. Get their five minutes of fame. Those people are going to exist. And, and if you don't want your child to, to grow up learning that these sort of people exist, then don't put them near social media. It's a bad friggin' idea. You think you can control social media or their social media intake? You're sadly mistaken. Sadly mistaken. Oh yeah, those that are Doctor Who fans, you might have watched the latest episodes, and they did take a stab at big technology, big tech. Great story, really, really funny how it happened. Makes you go, oh shit, yeah, that's right. You know, because of this, you're going to have to eventually answer everybody in robot form. You're going to have to type in your response into a device so that they can speak it in plain robot terms, nonstop, and very monotone, just like this, so that nothing's ever taken out of context. And I cannot tell you how much in life that happens. No need for gesture navigation in Chrome. No need at all. Get ready for no phone, big phones, no buttons. I think, I don't know if that is it. I don't know. Um, I, I was able to hold the the, uh, the Samsung uh, phone, the, the uh, shit, the double screen phone there, the Fold. For me and my big ass monkey hands, closed, I thought it was a pleasure to use. I had access to three rows of app apps about maybe six high, maybe. Uh, but it's three rows across, which was adequate, and you could literally use it in your own face. I don't know about people nowadays, but I have my phone here, and it has a pop socket on it because, again, the phones are at the size now that if you want a one-hand use it, and you're going to one-hand use it, if you're going to one-hand use it, you're going to really find that you can't get all the way. Like, I can't, there's no way. I mean, I have big-ass hands, and there's no way, unless I really adjust it uncomfortably, to get from one corner to the other corner. And when people do that, really, you're going to hold your phone like that? That's how you hold your phone? If that's how you hold it, then so be it. I don't. Uh, there's no way to reach that. But on the on the flip phone, on the uh, fold, it closed, it was very easy to use. And I see the appeal, because when I hit, I forgot what it was. I think it was a website or something. I clicked on it and it kind of led me to the opening of the fold and I opened it and I had this whole web page. It was brilliant. That is perfect. I loved it. Oh, it was a link in a message. So I opened up the message on the smaller portion of the phone closed and then I was able to click on the link in the message and I unfolded and there it was. So brilliant. I, I think that was wonderful. If the screen holds up even better, two grand though, two fucking grand. No way am I, not until it's established. When it's established and I know that phone's going to last me three, four years without the, the screen tweaking out, I'm on it. I think it's brilliant. Will it make me leave Apple's iOS? I don't know.
Ooh, cork. That's kind of cool. Going to music production. Classic. Now, in their defense, because we're seeing this again as you're going through the stream, uh, Sony's going to skip E3 again. Again, they're going to have an announcement today. So, you know, and again, it's E3 and CES are not what they what what they once were. Now, if you if you're not Microsoft and have massive amounts of money to dump into the you know the bells and the whistles, then who are you? You're just another game company. You're our representative there. Uh, in the outer booths, uh, in, in the smaller booths, but I mean, what are you trying to sell at this point? Get your ass on a platform like Steam. Being at, being at some of these shows isn't just isn't economically worthwhile anymore. There's no return. For, there's not enough return for it. You can do one on your own for a portion of the money or at least be able to control the money and the circumstances easier location and shit logistics you can you can have all that if you're in control of all that and you can have the the event as long as you want an hour or so if you go to an e3 or a ces or a a, a con even you know some of the bigger cons you're gonna have to represent the entire weekend or the entire week which however long the event is you're gonna have to represent the entire time yeah, that takes staffing that takes travel. That takes all that. If you're Apple, Apple's a good example. You go to the Apple campus to see the next announcement because it's at a building that Apple built. So, economics. That's cool. Kids with lazy eye can be treated just by letting them watch TV. Very cool. Very cool. Love that shit. Technology and medical industry are closer than people like to think, and they should be even closer. Similarities are uncanny. Good deal there. Cyber attacks getting worse and worse, and they're going to get awful in 2020. Easiest way to explain it, the um, there's what, 13, 14 domain name servers. Domain name server, domain name servers, change the address you're typing in Sony.com to numbers, or, or Google.com changes it over to 8.8.8.8. .8 so you're a lot of times you're getting you're getting. You know, a domain name server, one of the 13 or 14, I can't remember. And I think a guy in one of the head ends told me once, out of all of them, six are getting attacked every day. Every day, somebody makes an attempt on at least six different servers. So it's constantly, if that was told to me eight years ago, nine years ago, I'm pretty confident it's worse now. And also, the uh, power grid is always being hit or attempted to be hit. There's always breaks. Colleges, universities. Recently on The Pitch from Gimlet, we opened up the phone lines and let listeners call in and pitch their businesses. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, some ideas are easier to understand than others. CBD drink, this is what this is? Okay, so you do like oil changes and you do it all mobile? Are these the cryo tanks you're talking about? That's crazy. It's like a Geiger counter for the sun. Cool. Tap now to listen to Pitchline Bonanza from The Pitch. Enter the Rocket Mortgage Super Bowl Square sweepstakes. We're giving away $50,000 every score change, touchdowns, field goals, even extra points, 50 Gs. Plus, two grand prize winners will win a half million dollars that could be used toward their... Ooh, that's painful. For free. Citrix vulnerability. Um, Citrix is used a lot in business applications. Super Bowl 50. That's a big fucking problem. That's where, uh, that's where industrial espionage will come in, into play in a big, big way with something like that if you can get into database of like a, a comcast or a cox communications 
I mean, even if you can just scrub the bottom layer, like people that have disconnected service years ago and never got any service. And the milestones. That's a that's a honey pot right there. Up to today. But what happens off the bike? My dad just ran his fastest 10K yet. I've never seen him so sure of himself. Is why it matters. Try it for yourself with 30-day home trial. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. Save during Winter Wellness Weeks at CVS with hundreds of weekly wellness deals. This week, get up to $100 yeah, extra winter. rewards on select that. wellness products from brands like Ollie and Benefiber. Restrictions apply. See cvs.com slash weekly ad for details. YouTube's learning people. You know why? You know why a big reason for that too is because I use all these these platforms uh, in one way, shape, or form. Like I said, 2020 is going to be a big year. Um, yeah, you know why? Because YouTube's fucking easy. There's no overthinking. There's no bullshit. There's no nothing. It's YouTube. You know, if I look on that side, oh, can I upload a video? Cool. There's a button. I'm not guessing around where the fuck it is. If I want to stream or go live, I just click the go live button, which is dominant right there. <laughs> so, you know, with Mixer and Twitch, you're guessing it's just a fucking pain in the balls. I don't want to get into it. Because they all have good points and they all have a lot of bad points. All of them. And they all have bad points that outweigh the good points. They really do. They really do. But, and, and if you doubt it, I, I'm sorry, but I've been broadcasting for uh, 15 plus years in all different medias. So it, I'm not saying I'm great at them. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that I have the experience. And experience can speak a lot. Even if you're watching from a distance or, or from the doorway or something like that, you can, you know, I've been witness to a lot of different things, good, bad, and otherwise. But in, in broadcasting especially, I mean, there's trends that you can follow that you can see regularly. There's mistakes I see that other podcasters are doing and other people are doing. I mean, my shit's not perfect, but you know, donate, donate $2,000 and I'll make this shit sound and look 100% better. Just fact. You know, can you get away with it with cheaper stuff? Absolutely. Have I done that right now? No. A lot going on. This is not my job. It's my hobby. The difference. When it becomes my job, you, you start taking, not pr more pride in it, but when something goes to a job state, then it's something you can make money on, which means you're going to invest time and effort and finances to it. When it's a hobby, you donate time when you can, and finances when you can, and how you can. That's the difference. People seem to forget that. You know, hobbyists, there's ham radio that are hobbyists and they've been hobbyists for decades. You know, and, and these people are the cream of the crop and they can tell you how everything works and they can they can fucking disrupt your signal of your house if you piss them off enough. Yeah, I mean, your whole signal of your house. It's amazing. Um, and they're hobbyists. You know, very few of them get paid for what they know. I'm just saying. So the allure to YouTube... Learn away more top streamers from Twitch. Twitch is just demanding a lot of ways. Twitch, Twitch, mark my words. Twitch is eventually going to allow... A, a, they're stupid if they... Do, in business. I don't think it'd be smart for Twitch to not at least entertain the idea of a, of a possible paid section for adults. And I'll leave it at that. Regardless of how it is. Now, I'm saying, I'm not saying, you know, a, a sex site. I'm not saying that. I'm saying they can monetize the idea that people want to see uh, guys that are streaming in no t-shirts. You're basically paying for the mature content ad. And you're. this is a great way to keep the kids out and allow adults to, to just explore and do whatever they want to do. You know, Twitch is constantly worried about um, females that are on the camera being comfortable in their own home, but their, their, their tank top is too low. You know, their breasts are too big and pull down the tank top a little bit too much and they have too much cleavage. Well, they're comfortable. People are watching them are apparently comfortable or like it, who, who cares? Doesn't matter, viewers are viewers. And they're okay, and the streamer's okay with it. What the fuck do you care? Your biggest concern is keeping kids out. Well, there you go. This is how you do it. And of course, we can go into a whole other conversation about how that never works online, but at least you put it out there, and you can monetize it. 
You know, maybe it's maybe it's just a matter of just dropping a bunch of F-bombs constantly. Well, the difference is being on the outside, if you start broadcasting and you don't, you don't use profanity at all, then you could be on the front page without any worry from the company, the broadcaster, the host, worrying about, oh my gosh, am I going to be in trouble because there's a bunch of F-bombs and this, guy, this kid's playing at his house because he went to twitch.com. You don't want that. So instead, what you do is you make it so that it's it's profanity. And if I'm an adult and I subscribe to this site or I confirm that I am truly an adult, I get access to un my stream or, or my start page at twitch.com will have people that are broadcasting with profanity. I don't care. I'm a grown ass adult. I'm sitting in my in my home or my office. Let adults make adult decisions. Quit judging everybody for wanting to be an adult. That's nice. AirPods dropped to 129. I think they fit my ears great. I use them every day I'm at work. Of course it does. <laughs> of course it does. The uh, morning show, Nets Apple TV, is first industry award. That was done honestly. <clears throat> Bullshit. If you think for a moment that that wasn't pushed, I mean, that show has barely done a season. And you can't see. <laughs> Don't look over here. Nothing to see here. Ooh, look at that. And we'll move on. Trying to get rid of the older Kindles. Happens after Christmas. Because nobody bought those. They had a bunch of them produced. What the fuck are you going to do with them? Yes, there were sex toys at CES. Another one of those things that I think is complete garbage. A hundred different ways. They're sex toys. Look, who the f cares? We're all adults. You know, if if you prefer to use a sex toy or you're single and want to use a sex toy, who the f cares? You know, some of the technology, if you really look into it, some of the technology is unbelievable and really, 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 really good. Really good. Again, you're going to start seeing these in stores and shit. Will they work all the time? I don't know. People are going to... I guarantee you people are going to start fucking with them first. First and foremost. They're going to start messing with them. Just to see if they can break them, to get them to start, stop working properly. These are inventory robots. And trust me when it... Yeah, again, I don't know how they're doing the... the how, how many How many are in that row. I don't know how they're doing that. I'm sure there's a reason or a way or whatever, but... This is going to help out a lot. And at the same time, like we've said numerous times, this is going to take away jobs. There's, there's people, this is part of being a fucking stock boy. Getting your first damn job at Stop a Shop or Al Max or uh, Pitch and Go or the Piggly Wiggly or 7-Eleven. I don't give a fuck. You're going to be taking inventory sometime. Refill the chips, refill the, the nachos, refill the cat food. You're taking inventory of what's there. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's monotonous and it's blah, blah, blah. Well, it's a minimum wage job to get somebody a, a paycheck. You know what I mean? And the manager doesn't have to do it. But now you're going to replace it with robots. I don't know. I don't think it's completely the best thing, but I, I, I don't know if I heard it on... It had to be Leo Laporte that said it. It had to be. Um, that you, you're building a robot that's not... That's not fixing any problem. You know, there's no problem for that. Why did you need to fix that problem? There's no problem. It's just a robot that was be was built for no reason to build. 
We're approaching the limits of computer power. We need to programmers now. That is a very good article. This is a great article. I'm going to save this. This is a great article. You know what? I'll post the link right now on DGFG Online on Twitter. The Grodin Network, a leader in providing services to children and adults with autism oh, and related nice. disorders since 1976. That's Hiring definitely cool. direct support professionals to work part and full-time hours. Be a part of a supportive team and make a difference. We offer excellent benefits including earned time off, medical, dental, 401k, and more. Apply now at GrodinNetwork.org. It's really basic and really nice right there. Enter the Rocket Mortgage Super Bowl. That's Square really cool. Stakes. We're giving away $50,000 every score change. Touchdowns, field goals, even extra points. 50 Gs. Plus two grand prize winners. Nice. A half million dollars that could be used toward their dream home. Enter for free. It's really, really well done. Very basic, very what you need. If you want to record, say if you were, you know, an aspiring rapper or a singer, this is great for budget budget build Not sponsored promotion great $230 that's excellent excellent for that <laughs> it's easy to be a jerk on Twitter Twitter wants to fix that of course they do you don't want to turn into the next Facebook do you Remix of Message in the Bottle. I thought it sounded familiar. Well, they're not calling it that, but it's obviously that. The 
agreed. Streaming giants need need shows like Schoolhouse Rock 100%. Absolutely. Schoolhouse Rock taught me so much as a youth. I've used it for my children. I, uh, I, well, we homeschooled one of the boys for about a year, year and a half. Um, very hard to do. People miss, <laughs> there's a misconception as to how, how you're going to do that, but it's not easy. Um, to do everything, cover all the bases. Um, but yeah, he, that was, it was an eye opener because I, I couldn't find the material. I couldn't really get a grasp on what to, to teach in those aspects of different things. I mean, you can teach English, you can teach math and stuff, but what am I going to use to subsidize that? Can I throw them in front of Khan Academy? Absolutely. Can I throw them in front of... But what happened to the ways that we used to learn those valuable life lessons? You know, those messages in cartoons and shit. That's not really not even around anymore. You look at Clarence for the younger kids. You know, I was watching one episode. It's pretty much promoting him stealing the kids' french fries. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I don't care if they clarify it at the end. It's really... It was really fucked up. And a lot of shows are like that. Now, granted, when you're a little bit older, 8, 9, 10, 11, and you know better, you know, you can watch a little, a little more cartoons that that bend the rules a bit but there's none of that instant teaching type thing like schoolhouse rocks for for my generation schoolhouse rocks was awesome you know conjunction junction i'm just a bill i mean shit I, i can't tell you how many people i know my age that their entire idea of the political system comes from i'm just a bill and it's fucking accurate so i still think that's pretty friggin awesome on for an hour and a half. Amazing. How's computer programming different? Not a lot, but enough. You're damn right, most copyright lawsuits. Because it's hard. It's hard, you know, to come up with something new when when certain things are around for so long. You're going to hear repeat. There's only there's only so many notes. There's only so many keys. There's only so many structures, and there's only so many structures in music that work. You know, and something is very eclectic, but to get popular or to make money, which is you know the drive. You could be an artist and make your art. That's fine, but you're gonna want to get paid too. So you're going, to, you're going to, as a musician, you, you're going to do something somewhere sometime that you might not be happy with morally or breaks your artistry, but you're going to want to fucking eat. And you're going to want to get paid. And you figure, if okay, if, if this record company, Big Small, wants to pay me this amount and I got to do one album for them and then I can do like an experimental, you know, artsy one, I'm going to do that. I'll give them what they want. I'll, I'll do that. It's music. I'm still being an artist, but then I get to really do my artsy thing. That's, that's just the way shit's going to work. And it's getting harder for people to do things that... Be, oh, that sounds just like Led Zeppelin. Oh, that sounds like... Well, guess what? There's only so many ways to put a C, D, A, and E together. In that order. It's... I don't know. That's my opinion. Again, I'm not an expert musician. I've played music. I've been in bands. Look at this shit. Star Trek Picard has already been renewed for a second season. Shit's getting out of control. Canada's robotic camera system controls. That's pretty cool. The best USB microphone. I will analyze that shit later. Because that sounds like shit. I've entertained that one. Don't even know what that is. This is what I'm working on right now. And you can check with a bunch of other YouTubers. But it's it a mic's only gonna a mic's only gonna be so good. You need to know how to control it. I haven't adjusted shit on this. Um, and if I took the time to adjust a lot of the audio, it would sound a shit ton better. Um, Heller on YouTube. Can't remember the name of his show. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry. Excellent judge of audio. Um, he really has a good ear for that. And he breaks down 
the way the mics work and and I agree with him. I mean, I watched that video of him and I'm like, Psh. from working in radio, I can tell you, yep, that's exactly right. It's, your EQ is going to be, I'd say 50% of your sound. Mic is going to be, if it's a shitty mic, it's going to sound like shit. Can you build it up and EQ it to death to make it sound better? Hell yeah. But you're still going to be amplifying or trying to work on shit. If you start with a halfway decent microphone, you can, you can EQ that and put filters on to make it sound really, really good. It sounds like a more expensive phone. Headphone. CES was a snooze fest. Yes, it was. There was really nothing. A bunch of TVs that you're never going to be able to afford. A bunch of computer components and monitors and shit that aren't coming out till way later in the year. Nothing substantial, really. Not, not that I've heard thus far. I'm calling bullshit on this too, the Weber Connect thing. I think it's great for a newer device, brand new. Let that thing sit out in the yard, a New England one. <laughs> Let that sit out in New England for like two years and see how that fucker works. He's gonna be all busted up and falling apart. That's cool. Different burial opportunities. Fungus. Next cover pro. No. Oh, nice. Rugged. Well, since your phone, you decided to bring your screen edge to edge, you're going to have that shit happen. And it's not cheap to fix. None of them are. And all the ways Facebook tracks you every way and how to limit it. I don't know. Go to Wired. Search up that if you give a shit. But as Fremo and I have told you a hundred times on BGFG, it's just don't fucking bother. Facebook has come out and said they really don't give a shit what you do. They don't. They're going to take the information. As soon as you sign that EULA, the end user license agreement, as soon as you click on OK, you give up your rights for anything that you do in or around Facebook. An example, if you don't believe me. When you shut off the no notifications for Facebook on your Apple iDevice. Oh, you went into the settings on the Facebook app and you changed it to don't use my geolocation. And then you went into the notifications of your settings on your phone and you chose no to the geolocation. Then you went down to privacy and you clicked on that and you made sure that that location part was off as well. Facebook is still tracking you and they've set it in court. But they're still going to track you because that's how they do it. You know what? It's going to happen. So you can look at this and see how it tracks you. You're going to be surprised probably, but again, you're on it. So, your fault. My wife, when my wife and I left Facebook, yeah, it was the end of 2019 at some point. When we left Facebook, our spam mail and robocalls went down dramatically. I mean, dramatically. I, I think I get one robocall a week, maybe. Maybe. And um, and I wasn't even as as proliferant. Uh, that's not even a word. I wasn't even on Facebook as much as as my wife was, and she would get you know constant text messages, emails, all sorts of shit all the time. I didn't get as much, but it was still annoying. My, my I was every morning I I check my email accounts and I spent half my time going through spam, and it was all directed from there. Apparently, oh no, it doesn't. It's your bullshit. You don't know what you're talking about. Really? Because I canceled, I deleted my Facebook account, and suddenly I didn't get them anymore. Yeah, Spectrum left their home security business. People have tech in their house that doesn't even fucking work. right there. NASA discovered a Earth-sized world. Let's see if it's a world that can support life. Why, I finally switched from Chrome to Firefox. Alright, slash dot where I usually like you. What the hell is this bullshit? 
Because let me tell you something, Firefox is under fire right now for having a massive hole to where people are being told not to install it. I'm calling bullshit on that. Let's see that. Yes, there was a lot of foldable tablets. A lot of them did not look that good. Sam Gerald discovers a new plan on the third day. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, Asuka have a real chance of beating Becky Lynch. Yes, she does. Drew McIntyre defeated Ray Leorin. Yes, wrestling's fake. Don't start that bullshit. You jump off you know, four feet land flat on your back. In fact, where you're standing right now, just fall flat on your back. Flat on your back. You tell me how it feels. So I tell you, at karate, we do, we do falls and shit all the time. And there's a, there's a good chance you could get hurt, whether it's a pulled muscle or something, if you don't fall correctly. And these guys, none of these guys fall the same, and you can't always fall perfectly. These guys take beatings. You need to appreciate that. And not to mention the diet that they have to do. You're on TV all the fucking time, man. You can't you can't have an ounce of fat on you in, in high definition. Or if you do, it's got to be well hidden. Well, I think that's just about going to wrap it up for today. I know there's a little bit more news over here and such. But I'm not really going to think about it because the news will keep coming. It's one thing we I learned at a very young age and was taught to by my my mom was that you're going to there's always going to be something new, always going to be new news. Part and so time hours can't obsess over it. It is what it is. Team and make a difference. We offer excellent benefits. All right. Well, I'll see you guys next time. I have the opportunity in the morning to do an after the facts at grodennetwork.org. Okay, you know how it feels when you've saved enough for that long-awaited home edition? Now imagine an edition on that edition. That's the feeling with Capital One, where a new savings...